This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This question comes from Reginald Morton and has to do with the role of the United States in slowing economic growth in Japan after the 1990 period or during uh, 1990 and the time after uh, and clearly is motivated by wondering whether something like that is going on vis-a-vis -vis the competition now from the People's Republic of China. Good question, right on time, right on target. Let me respond this way. The United States has always protected those industries strong enough and able to mobilize the senators and representatives needed to get the government to act to protect it. The automobile industry is a number one example. I'm going to give you the example in a minute in some detail because it connects to Japan. But there are plenty of other examples throughout American history. Uh, sugar, if you're interested, is an extraordinary example uh, that's been going on for, for many, many decades. Uh, the only reason to underscore it is to remind you that the speeches given in Congress and on the 4th of July about the United States' commitment to free trade and unfettered markets is uh, window dressing. It's verbiage. It's uh, word salads uh, thought to be the appropriate thing for public speeches. It's not the reality, and it never has been. So, if, for example, when the Japanese set out after World War II to rebuild their economy and targeted the automobile industry, at that time the number one industry in the United States, which was the number one capitalist country at the time, it was a logical target. It was bold of the Japanese to imagine that they could compete with the number one industry in the number one capitalist country that had just defeated Japan in a war that ended with dropping nuclear bombs on the Japanese. Uh, do I have to say more? And yet the Japanese decided to do it, and even more impressive, they did it. That is, they ended up producing better cars at lower price. And that is why you all know names like Toyota and Honda and Nissan and all the rest, because they succeeded. And what the American automobile industry did in the face of Japanese competition was typical to what American industries have always done, which is try to figure out how to fight back and include in your strategy getting the government in Washington to give you legal protection. So, for example, they went to Washington and they got help. The Japanese were forced by American diplomacy to limit the number of cars they sent to the United States, a quota system. Tariffs were toyed with, all kinds of formal and informal public and private arrangements were made that all amounted to economic protection for a well-connected automobile industry in the United States. There are other examples. So it is true the United States did negatively impact Japanese growth. But I would argue that that was only part of the story. The collapse of the Japanese economy in 1990 and afterwards had many other contributing factors as well. Chinese capitalism had overinvested in all kinds of ways. Japanese property values were crazily inflated, uh, above all Tokyo real estate prices. And finally, the Japanese were affected by the growing competition from the People's Republic of China. If you add all of these factors together, you can easily explain Japan's dropping away from the great challenger to the United States' global dominance in capitalism and giving way to the new challenger, the People's Republic of China. But there are some distinguishing factors here that separate Japanese experience from Chinese experience. The Japanese were very badly affected by World War II. Not only did they lose the war, not only was the United States the dominant a winner of that war in that part of the world, but it really had an impact on Chinese self, excuse me, Japanese self-esteem, politically, ideologically, and culturally. 
Uh, and that has lasted a long time. The United States established an occupation in Japan, as I'm sure most of you know, etc., etc. The Chinese were a much more determined uh, player in the game, had not been defeated by the United States in a world war. In fact, in the Korean War, the Chinese had as good a claim as any to having at least equaled the United States, if not defeated them. Uh, a determination to grow a much larger country in population, in geography, in resources, and so on. So the Chinese is a, are a different situation, different sit situation, and different people. And, and the result is the United States is having much more difficulty. Also, for other reasons, the United States found it profitable to work with the Chinese economic development after the 1980s, 1990s, uh, so that finally when it became clear that the Chinese had their own agenda, uh, you had a situation where the American capacity to, to stop it uh, was coming too little and too late. Uh, so the histories will be different and are different. The uh, ability of the United States to do damage is still there. The determination of the United States to protect its industries, still there. Part of the story of the Huawei Corporation here, and TikTok story, and other stories uh, being delisted from the stock exchange if you're a Chinese major company, and so on. These are efforts of the United States that have something to do with slowing Chinese uh, development. But so far, the Chinese have proved very adroit in getting around them, in undoing them, uh, and in retaliating in ways that will make the United States uh, think long and hard about continuing this kind of behavior. And I'm not even talking about the risks to world peace that are involved uh, in this effort. And it is particularly aggressive from the United States because uh, they have done too little and they have waited too late uh, to try to stop the situation. But when you remember that there were many factors involved in Japan and that there would have to be many factors here in China as well, plus the United States' special situation of having waited too, little, uh, too long and doing too little along the way, uh, I think the prognosis for what the United States can do vis-a-vis -vis China is much less advantageous to the United States. And finally, the United States itself has a level of difficulty, of economic problems, of contradictions coming to a head that are sharper now, much more, than they were in the 70s, 80s, and 90s uh, when the Japanese were the great competitor. So all of the variables are quite different, and I think, therefore, the outcome will be different as well. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work, thanking those of you in our Patreon community for the questions you send in.